Amen. Let's give glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. You know, so, sometimes just listening to testimonies is enough already. We always get the whole message beginning to end. Just listening to the wonderful things that God has done. Anyone else? experience miracles I want to be open and obedient to God anyone else praise God let's pray father we just want to thank you Lord for the proclamation of hope this morning that is going out father God to each and every one of us and we are we are the carriers of hope Lord carriers of that hope everywhere we go Lord that our God is real Lord not just real but it's our God is personal Lord and you desire to have a personal relationship with each and every one of us. You yearn for our hearts. Lord, we heard the wonderful testimonies this morning. You yearn for fellowship with us, Lord. Just like our sister yearned for fellowship with her grandchildren. You yearn for intimacy, Lord. You yearn for us to draw near to you, Lord. Be near your heart, Lord. And Father, we pray that more than anything else, Lord, that we're going to proclaim this year. Help us to draw near to you, Lord, in intimacy this year like never before Lord help us to know you Lord help us Father to continue to experience your faithfulness and goodness and even this morning Lord Father we thank you that even as our sister shared Lord uh, about lifting up hands and worshipping and receiving Lord and even our brother Lord who has experienced Charles who has experienced Lord that healing in his body as he just lift up his hands and worship Thank you, Lord, for mighty breakthroughs, Lord. Father, we declare that it has begun in the name of Jesus. We have entered into the season of greater things, Lord. We have entered into the season of greater works, Lord. The works of our Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, through each and every one of us, Lord. That your name may be glorified. That no, no man, Father, can claim any credit, Lord. That all glory, Lord God, Father, comes to you and to you alone alone father god lord when you stand you stand undefeated lord father every giant has to fall father at the name of jesus lord father we just want to thank you lord we give you praise and we give you thanks in jesus name we pray amen praise the lord praise the lord hallelujah let's let's give him another round of praises just praise him he's here he's here he's in our midst you know i'm so encouraged that you know, the, uh, I think some of us know that our, one of our dearest, uh, Auntie Margaret, you know, she's been in our church for so many years. Uh, I would say, you know, almost, almost what, 25, 30 years in our church. And uh, um, last Friday, as, as I was sitting down to prepare this message that I wanted to share, uh, I got a phone call from Dr. Baldev, who went and verified, you know, that she had already gone home to be with the Lord. And... Uh, it was, it, was, it was a very, very sad time for me because she's one of the real supporters, the one who really loves the church, uh, encouraged the, the church. You know, and many times, even in her, her times of sickness, she will be here praying with us. And uh, we will be so encouraged to, to, to hear her even pray. She doesn't pray just, uh, you know, when she starts praying, it's like a huge generator has started in heaven. And uh, she, you know, I think some of you who come for prayer, you know what, what I'm talking about. You know, we, we just feel so blessed in our hearts when we hear her pray because it's a heartfelt, fervent prayer for, you know, for the harvest of souls, for people to be added into the kingdom of God. And she'll be praying for the unreached people groups, particularly who are very close to her heart. And uh, you know it's such a joy uh, uh, to to uh, have her with us for all these years. We I count myself uh, blessed to have her. We're so we're so blessed to to have someone like her in our church. Uh, it's very painful when people like that are, have to go home. But I guess, I guess the Lord knows. He takes uh, people in his in his time, in his perfect time and will. But what I was really trying to share is this: you know, on uh, on uh, on Friday and uh, Saturday uh, uh, Saturday night we had a, a wake service. Sorry. I'd, uh, 
on Saturday and we had a wake service and on Sunday we had another service. And I was just asking the Lord, you know, because sometimes when wake services come, one of those things that really uh, comes up in our heart as pastors is what to preach. You know, we, we're just as human as anyone. We're not sure what to preach. And we, you know, we start thinking about who to call to preach and things like that. But somehow we know it's our responsibility and we need to preach. And uh, we, we, I just asked the Lord, you know, as I was... Uh, quickly rushing to the bathroom to get myself ready and go for the service. I said, Lord, what what do you want me to say? And uh, the Lord was so gracious and gave me a word that normally uh, we would not preach at a wake service. And And I went to the service and I preached that word in obedience to what the Lord had told me to preach. And the word was interesting, you know, for a wake service to preach on Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And uh, the word so touched the, the lives of the people who were there and uh, the family members. And uh, it was confirmed you know, by uh, someone. Just after I thought about that word, uh, I received a WhatsApp from one of the sisters in our church, from another sister who didn't know what was going on. Just asked, are you going? Uh, and I said, yes, I'm going for the wake service. And she said, she's coming because this person is, uh, the uh, Auntie Margaret uh, treated her so kindly. She was so gentle. She was so good and welcomed her to the church when she first came to the church. So she was so touched and she said she has to go for the week service. And the scripture in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 and following verses says this, let your gentleness be known to all men. So as soon as I thought about the word, I got this WhatsApp saying that, you know, that is, uh, that is how this sister saw Sister Margaret. And I was so, you know, so encouraged in my heart. I said, Lord, you know, you know, we pastors, we don't know sometimes half the time what we are supposed to say. But uh, you, you are so gracious and you are so good and you gave us that word. And then on a Sunday afternoon, uh, sorry, when was that? Saturday afternoon when we uh, went for the funeral service. Uh, again, you know, I was struggling and asking the Lord, what is the word that I'm supposed to preach and what is the word I'm supposed to share? And uh, the Lord gave me a, a message from John chapter 11, I'm the resurrection and the life. I think most of you know this, uh, this is one of the scriptures that we normally use at a funeral service. Uh, but the Lord gave it to me from a completely different perspective on waiting, on waiting on the Lord. And what do you do when your answers to prayers don't come? You know, and uh, again, from a totally different perspective, and uh, like before, even I went up to preach. Uh, Jerome, the son, went up and read out a psalm, and the psalm was Psalm 13. We were not communicating with each other; we we're not telling each other what we are going to share or anything like that. And the and the psalm in Psalm 13 spoke about how long, O Lord, how long do I wait for you? And, and again, it was a message that just connected with uh, John chapter 11. And you could see the Holy Spirit just move uh, in, the, in, the, in the services there. God is so good and so, God is so gracious to answer all our prayers. Can we say amen to that? He, he's a God. You know, when you don't strive and you just rest and enjoy the right, you find that more answers to prayer come. When we strive and we are forcing and we are, you know, demanding, you know, sometimes we find that it takes longer. Why? Because we are not resting in the Lord. We are not resting in the faithfulness of God, you know. And God is faithful. Can we say amen to that? He's so faithful to us. And again, uh, I apologize, Charles, that, you know, I almost missed that testimony because it was a remarkable, wonderful testimony, amazing testimony. And we give praise and thanks, God. thanks to God. As I said, Every testimony is a proclamation of hope. And that is the title of my message today. We saw uh, the, the two Ps already. We saw the prophecy of hope that is found from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 1 to 7. Our theme scripture, if you have your Bibles, you can open to Isaiah chapter 9, verse uh, 1 to 7. And, um, but we, we saw, you know, there was a prophecy of hope that was given to King Ahaz. And uh, this prophecy was to encourage him, to direct him, to help him to make the right decision. Uh, that is to trust in the Lord instead of trusting in human strength and human understanding. 
It was it's a very simple testimony. It was to encourage him. It came from Isaiah. This record in from Isaiah chapter uh, 7 to Isaiah chapter 9 is basically a conversation that is going on, an encouragement that is going on between Isaiah and King Ahaz, who was once one of the kings of Judah. And, and so we hear from this, uh, this uh, portion of scripture here that there are really two types of hope in this world. There are two types of hope. One is hope in the world, and I would include things like hope in man, hope in the wisdom of man, hope in the systems of this world, hope in, the, in, in what we would really call the, the Babylonian mindset of thinking, a hope in the world. It is carnal, it is self-serving, it is uh, uh, sensual, it is uh, to gratify the flesh. That is a hope that we find in the world. All right? The systems of the world, on the things of this world, the things, the devices of men, all this I would categorize under the hope of the world. And then we have another hope which is called the biblical hope, which is we call the hope in God. And so we saw there was a war, there's a clash, there's a, always a clash that is going on in the, in the world between the hope that is found in the world and the hope that is found. So always a clash. In fact, the battle rages on even till today. That raging of hope that is between. So there's a pull between the hope in the world. We should hope in the world, hope in the systems. Every decision, almost every decision that we make is a war between hoping in the world or hoping, or hoping in man, which includes hope in the world, or hope in God. It's always a battle. And a lot of times, we find that we are pulled between the two. So, we heard about this prophecy. of. So, we want to correctly base our foundation on the biblical hope, the hope that is found in God, so that we will, we will be unshakable. You know, our hope is growing. We declare that our hope is growing and will continue to grow with what God is doing and will continue to do in our land. We continue to declare that hope. So the question we ask ourselves here is, we, need, we heard about the prophecy of hope, all right? And then we saw the presence of hope, the two Ps, the prophecy of hope that was proclaimed by Isaiah, and then the presence of hope, when hope became manifest. When hope came as a baby born in a manger on Christmas Day. Hallelujah. Hope became present. And, and that, that prophecy described that hope, gave a description of that hope. And, and it's both these parts, the first two P is God's part. God is the one who prophesied through Isaiah and God is the one who showed up. And we could end with all that and a lot of times many of us, we stop with that. The prophecy of hope, hallelujah, we thank God, God has already prophesied about hope and we glory in the presence of hope. Thank you, Lord, that Jesus showed up and his name shall be called. What shall his name be called? His Emmanuel. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. His name shall be called Everlasting Father. His name shall be called Mighty God. His name shall be called Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. And, and we are so glad and satisfied just to worship and exalt his name. By the way, worship is a proclamation of hope. Can we say amen to that? When we worship God, we are proclaiming hope to one another and we are proclaiming hope into the heavenlies. You know, sometimes we find that even when we are in our own uh, little uh, home or in our room or wherever we may be, we can sing and we can worship God. But it's a different dimension when we are together worshipping God. It's different. You know why? Because we are proclaiming hope to one another. We may not be able to sing. Sometimes I come to church, I can tell you this, as, as human as I am, as I am, I, 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 I don't have the strength to worship the Lord. I'm weary, I'm tired, uh, I've got so many things running on in my mind. But when I come into the, 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 the fellowship where there is a gathering, Proclaiming hope to me. Hallelujah. You're proclaiming your hope in God and I'm hearing it. 
and I'm encouraged by that proclamation of hope. So we, but many times we just stop at that. We stop at the prophecy of hope. Thank you, Lord. We know that you, you have come. You are, you are coming to deliver us from darkness to light. But then, and then you came and you presented yourself on Christmas Day. But there's another P that is important. And that's what we're going to be focusing on this year as we start from the get-go, from the on 3rd of January, the first Sunday of the month, we're going to start with the third P, which is the most important right now. It, the first two parts are God's responsibility. The third part is our responsibility. And what is our responsibility? Our responsibility is to proclaim hope. The third P is the proclamation of hope. Otherwise, it will just remain in our hearts and in the heart of God. But hope needs to be proclaimed. So, first question we ask ourselves is, what hope? And the answer we already know, the answer is biblical hope. Hope that comes from God needs to be proclaimed. Not any other hope. We pray that by the end of this year and until the end of your lifetime here on this earth, the only hope that you and I will proclaim is biblical hope, not any other hope. We proclaim hope when we sing, when we lift up our hands, when we testify, we are proclaiming hope, hallelujah, to the people that are around us, that our God is real, our Jesus is real. We worship a living God. He's not uh, hidden in some stone or he's not hidden in some wood or he's not hidden in some building, but we worship a omnipresent God. We worship an omniscient God. We worship an omnipotent God. A God who is all powerful, all knowing, all right, and all wise. He's a all present, present everywhere, an omnipresent God. We worship that kind of God. We proclaim that. And we proclaim that through many other many ways. Right? So the first question is what hope? Second question is how is that hope proclaimed? And I think most of you already know the answer because I've run ahead of myself and I say that how the third part is our responsibility. So don't get worried about all this because as you as this unfolds, you will find that God has not just called us to be proclaimers of hope, but He has empowered us to be proclaimers of hope. And we're going to discover how. But let's go to the next slide, all right? So we saw two kinds of hope and how do we hope. The next slide is this. This is the this is the hope. The world is in need, the world is in, in is in a state of gloom and doom, all right? And the world needs hope which is of biblical proportions. We, have, we are experiencing doom of biblical proportions in this world. And slowly now, we think, the world thinks it's coming out, slowly creeping out from this age of gloom and doom that we are all experiencing, the global pandemic. And now, you know, some spark again, all right, some spark of hope that has been given that is coming from where? from the system of men. All right? What is the spark of hope? A vaccine has been found. All right? So now, the world is rejoicing. Why? Because the world places their hope in the systems of the world. I'm not saying all of you here in the systems of the world. I'm just using this site as an illustration. illustration. All of us put our hope in God. Hallelujah. All of us put our hope in God alone. But the world is rejoicing. So why is the world in a state of gloom and doom? Very simple. Can we answer? Why is the world, why do you think the world is in a state of gloom and doom? Because they have placed their hope in the world. Do you see that? You just think about it for a while. If you place your hope in the things of the world, it will be gloom and doom. It will be gloom and doom. All right? But if you put your hope in God, then you will see a great light shine. Hallelujah. In the name, even in the midst of gloom and doom, we will see a great light shine. And so, hope of biblical proportions is needed for the world today. Can somebody say amen to that? Do you agree that the world needs hope? Amen. And not just any hope, but it needs hope which is of biblical proportions. Right? In fact, the word that the world uses, there's gloom and doom of biblical proportions, is the wrong word that they use. They like to use biblical proportion to talk about disasters. All right, a flood of biblical proportions. I say, I don't use the Bible's name in vain. All right, you want to use your word, you use any other word, but the Bible has only one standard it's hope. Hallelujah. Hope that we have in our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, this hope of biblical proportions appeared on the scene on Christmas Day. And let's read that together Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Do you want hope this morning? 
Do you want to proclaim hope this morning? If you want hope this morning, read the Word of God. All right, this morning we heard from Sister Malian and so many of us here, the Word of God is powerful. Amen. It will not just put you to sleep, but it will wake you up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Wake your spirit up in the name of Jesus. You know, I was just thinking about Sister JC's testimony. Last time she couldn't close her hand. Now she can close her hand. I was thinking, Richard is in trouble. All right. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. All right. Okay. All right. Just sorry. This is the naughty me. Yeah. Just going through my mind. All right. Let's read. The hope of biblical proportions. Everybody read together. One, two, tiga. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. The question here is, Hope has been given. Hope is present. So the question is, how is this hope going to be fulfilled? For that, we have to go flashback. Let's go to the next one, which is verses 1 to 3. Just now what you read was is found in Isaiah 9, 6. But let's read Isaiah 9, 1 to 3 first, where hope was prophesied. So there will be no gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun, and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he has made glorious the way of the sea and the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shone. So you can see here that there is a transition. There is a transition. What is the transition? From gloom, you notice that but there will be no gloom. Earlier, there was gloom. From gloom to glory. We see, from gloom, there is, is going to make the latter time more glorious. Gloom means darkness. Gloom means no hope. Gloom means hopelessness. Gloom means sadness. Gloom means defeat. But from gloom, there is going to be a time of gloriousness. From gloom to glory. That's going to be a transition. This is the prophecy. This is how the Bible prophesied. So we set ourselves on this. All right? And the, not just that, but we see there is a, the, as I've underlined those words there, there is an indication of a former time and a latter time. God is going to move us from the former times to the latter times. What it used to be like, I like the way Dr. B put it, what is not going, what is going to be like in the past is not going to be like that in the future. Hallelujah. In the future, it's going to be from gloom to glorious. Catch this. Catch this. All right. We're not going to remain in the place of gloominess. Why are we in the place of gloominess? We don't have to wait for the future. It's in a place because of the hope in the world. Anytime you feel gloomy, anytime you feel a sense of hopelessness, Anytime you feel a sense of defeat, anytime you feel a sense of helpless, have you ever felt, felt like that before? If you felt in that place before, then our hope is based, based on men. All right? Our hope is based on men. Our hope is based on the systems of the world, on the systems of men. All right? The creative man, the wisdom of man, we have placed our hope there. But it's going to move from gloom to glory. Hallelujah. Say, I'm going to move from gloom to glory. Hallelujah. From gloom to glory. Hallelujah. I'm going to move. Everybody say with me, I'm going to move. Let's make, because remember, your miracle is in your mouth. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to move from gloom to glory. I'm going to move from latter time to, for, uh, from former time to latter times. Hallelujah. And it's going to be seasons of breakthrough. I am, and you notice another thing here. It was dark, alright? From times, the people who walked in darkness have seen the great light. I'm going to move from darkness to light and great light. You want to add great, go ahead and add it for yourself. Say, I don't care about anybody else. I'm going to move in great light. Hallelujah. I'm going to move from darkness, from sickness, from disease, from oppression, from fear, into a great light in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to move from this transition. All right. So, 
God is going to move us. This was the hope that is prophesied. The whole world is going to emerge from a season of gloom and a season of uncertainty. The whole world is going to emerge as we proclaim that hope. As we proclaim that hope, biblical hope, we have to shift. We have to help. We have to proclaim to the people in darkness. We have to proclaim so that they will see a great light. That's how it's going to come. Otherwise, this, this prophecy and the presence cannot be fulfilled unless there is a proclamation. There needs to be a proclamation. Okay, the next one. The next slide. You have mud. And this is, you know, if you really look at this portion of scripture, the following verses, all following from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 1 to 7, is speaking about on earth as it is in heaven. Verse 3. You have multiplied the nation and you have increased its joy. And they rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and for the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. Now if you look at this scripture, it is speaking about firstly the multiplying of the nation. The nation that was in gloom and doom and failure and sadness and fear and anxiety and oppression. God is going to multiply the nation. He's going to bless the nation. The territory is going to increase. The, the, the rule, the dominion of this nation that was under the gloom and doom, God is going to multiply. This is the, this is the declaration of hope that God spoke over the nation of Israel. You're going to multiply. God is going to multiply the nation. And this really speaks about when we talk about the nation, we talk about the land that is going to be multiplied and increased, we are talking about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is going to come to earth as it is in heaven. You see here, you notice here, it is on earth as it is in heaven. We're going to experience heaven here on earth. We're going to experience. God is proclaiming. God is prophesying here. That is his heart. That is the heart of the Father. You know, I was struggling to, to write a title for this slide. But I, I first wrote it as the Father's heart, the Father's desire. And then I realized that the Father's heart and the Father's desire is on earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in everything that is in heaven, God wants to transfer here to earth. You know, the, whatever that the, why did Jesus come to this earth to bring heaven to earth? You know, if Jesus was going to come to earth and to see an earth that is destroyed, then God would not have to have to, would not have to have to send his son. He didn't have to send his son. All right? Because the world can go into destruction by itself. Can we say amen to that? The world doesn't need Jesus to come to watch and observe, to see the world go into destruction. Jesus came to save the world. Can we say amen to that? Jesus, you, this is the mindset of hope. It's, it's transferring. You know, from the, what we are hearing in the newspapers, oh, you read in the news media, you need to read in, the, uh, uh, in all this uh, social media, and you read in the news, and uh, all the latest uh, broadcasts that are coming out, all we are hearing about is about gloom and doom. The world is going to thrash. Uh, the world is going to be destroyed. All kinds of bad things are happening. All, you see, the Savior did not come into the world to see the world destroyed. Can we say amen to that? He didn't say he, God came to the world to save the world. What is the best scripture that we can think about when we talk about, when we forget this and we read the newspapers and we are overwhelmed by the message of doom and gloom, we remind ourselves John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave, he sent his only begotten son that whosoever, whosoever where? On the earth, on the world, whosoever who believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. They will not perish. Can we say amen to that? They will not perish. They will not perish. They will not perish, but they will have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son, John chapter 3, verse 17, God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be sozo, might be saved. Hallelujah. The world through Him might... That's the whole point of Jesus coming to earth. Now, if we are caught up in the hope that comes from the world, that everything is going to be damaged and destroyed and there's no hope, then we are missing out the Messiah's mission. 
the Messiah's mission is to save the world. And you see here the prophecy that is coming. You have multiplied the nations. With the coming of the Messiah, the kingdom of God will expand. There shall be no end. There shall be no end. There shall be no end of the increase and the multiplication of his government. There shall be no end. Now the mistake that we make when we look at a scripture like this, because he said this is the picture that he's giving. You have increased its joy, not decrease, not more and more depression, but you will increase its joy. Hallelujah. You will re- and they will rejoice. Why will they rejoice? Because you have increased their joy. Those out there, those who do not know the Lord, their joy is going to increase. It's, there's going to be a time of celebration. I know many of us are going to look at this scripture and say, Pastor, you are talking about the second coming of the Lord. Isn't that true? Isn't that how many of us believe this as? It's the second coming. After the second coming, all these things will happen. But let me tell you this. This scripture is before Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. Unto us a child is born. Born unto us a son is given. The child is not going to be born and given at the second coming. He is already here in the name of Jesus. Jesus was already born on Christmas Day. And there's big talk going all over the world saying that we shouldn't celebrate Christmas. Christmas is a pagan festival. You know, all kinds of attacks against Christmas Day. But you know what? Christmas Day is the most important day. In the Christian calendar. I don't care when it was. All right, I announced to the world. I don't care when it was. You can say March. You can say July. You can say September. You can say December. But I said Christmas Day came in the name of Jesus. And Jesus was born. And I refuse to back down from that. My Jesus came into the world as was prophesied. Hallelujah. I get excited. Because this is a scripture, this is a prophecy that was given 700 years before Jesus stepped into the scene. 740 years BC before Jesus came into the scene. This was prophesied. Hope was prophesied. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. Jesus was born. And this is speaking about the increase of his government. It's a mockery. To the coming of Jesus, if we say that after Jesus, the world was destroyed. What are we saying, church? We are following the world. Oh, what about Matthew chapter 24? What about Luke 24? All those things, we we can sit down and we can talk and we can explain to you. What is it talking about? But let me tell you this. This is the prophecy and I believe the prophecy. This is the word of God and I believe the word of God. We are going to see more and more people experiencing the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. We're going to see more and more people healed in the name of Jesus. Healings are going to not decrease. You know, what is a famous saying that people like to go around saying, ah, there are no more healing in the name of Jesus. That was during the time of the apostles. But my Bible doesn't say that. My Bible doesn't say that. You know, those who are willing to step out and proclaim the word, and speak healing, and declare healing in the name of Jesus, they will see healing in the name of Jesus. You know, the world, I I was just thinking the other day, as I was driving somewhere near Auto City, praying and declaring God's word, I was just thinking to myself, I said, the world is so full of positive thinking. Isn't that true? They're so full of positive, they, they believe in positive thinking. The world believes in positive thinking. They say that when you think, you can, you know, project your thoughts and your mind and it all come to pass. You know where they got that from? They got that from the Bible. We do not believe in positive thinking. We believe in biblical prophecy in the name of Jesus. And prophecy that comes to pass, we believe. He who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder. Rewarder. Rewarder church. Let 2021 be a year of of that changeover in the name of Jesus. The things of the kingdom of God will continue to accelerate 
accelerate, accelerate, accelerate. This is the season that is coming. This is a season that has been prophesied. They, you, shall, you have increased in joy. They shall rejoice before you as with the joy of the harvest. I tell you, we're going to see a harvest in the name of Jesus. And there is going to be so much joy in the harvest. People unexpected are going to come into the saving knowledge of Jesus. Isn't that what we've been proclaiming? Isn't that what we've been declaring? We shall see radical conversions all across the land. People shall be baptized in the name of Jesus. Thousands. I mean, in Thailand, they're seeing thousands getting baptized. And you know, everyone keeps prophesying, including the Christians, keeps saying, Thailand is a hard land. Thailand is a hard land. You know what are we doing? We are declaring that Thailand is a hard land. And so there were some intercessors that woke up and said, no such thing. And to my friends in Thailand, hallelujah, God bless you, brothers and sisters. They declared that it's, it's not a hard land. In the name of Jesus, Thailand belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, their confession. You see, you bring it under the rule and the authority of Jesus. You bring it under the rule and you begin to awaken hope. Thousands getting water baptized in Thailand. Thousands getting water baptized in Thailand. Thailand is the hardest country, everybody says, but thousands are getting water baptized in Thailand. I know, I tell you, watching some of the video feed that is coming from Thailand, it's so exciting to see God moving in Thailand. There shall be a joy of the harvest. There's going to be a joy of the harvest as we see here. And they're going to be glad and they're going to divide the spoil in the name. You know what is spoil? Spoil is plunder. Everything that belongs, rightfully belongs to us, is going to be returned to us in the name of Jesus. Everything that rightfully belongs to us. Does healing belong to us or belongs to, belongs to the devil? He longs, he, sickness belongs to the devil. Healing belongs to us in the name of Jesus. Amen? Everything that belongs to us, everything, does joy belong to us? Have you been robbed of your joy? Does the, joy, the devil deceive us to the point where, where we cannot experience and enjoy joy? Yes. So we're going to divide the spoil. And we're going to divide the plunder. There's going to be so much of plunder that, you know, all our lifetime we're going to be collecting the plunder. Everything of the kingdom of God. Joy, love, peace, hope. Everything that is of the kingdom of God is going to increase in the name of Jesus. Is going to increase. Hope is going to increase in me, Lord. Hope is going to increase in my family, Lord. Hope is going to increase in our, in our church, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Joy is going to increase. And they are glad when they divide the spoil. Unprecedented miracles are happening in the church, Lord God, and are happening in our land. Hallelujah. For the yoke of his burden and the staff on his shoulders, speaking about Jesus, his, our, his yoke, our, our yoke is easy and our burden is like the rod of his oppressor. You have broken. The rod of the oppressor, whatever that has been oppressing us, oppressing the church, oppressing the nation, in the name of Jesus, the rod of the oppressor has been broken over Malaysia. I prophesy this, I declare this in the name of Jesus. Will you declare this with me? The rod of the oppressor has been broken. Anytime you feel sick, you declare, the rod of the oppressor has been broken. Anytime you feel discouraged, you say, the rod of the oppressor has been broken. Been broken by what? The finished work of Christ on the cross. It has been broken, hallelujah. The rod of the oppressor that brings sickness has been broken broken in the name of Jesus by the finished work of Christ on the cross. Hallelujah. Jesus died and he didn't stay dead. What happened to Jesus? On the third day, Jesus rose again in resurrection power. Rose again in victory. And this morning, I want to encourage you. Why don't you and I rise this morning in victory? Yes, let's stand. Let's stand. Hallelujah. Let's stand and declare that victory in the name of Jesus. Now, those of you who want to declare and receive that victory, the victory that came from the cross, I don't know about you, I'm going to receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. From gloom to glory. Hallelujah. From, letter, from former times to latter times. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, Father. From darkness into great glory. Hallelujah. That is why 
Lord Jesus came, Lord. And we worship you, Jesus. And we give you praise, Jesus. Lord, for the prophecy and the presence, Father God. Lord, we thank you, Father, that we are filled with hope, Father. We are filled with hope, Lord. And we thank you, Father, that the word of God says, Father, in, uh, in Romans, Father God. Hallelujah. This is not in the, the scriptures there, but I just felt the, the word of God. If we want to declare the word of God over each and every one of us. Romans chapter 15 and verse 13. Hallelujah. I declare this over us. I declare this over myself in the name of Jesus. I declare this over my family. I declare this over my spiritual family. Rivers of water. Hallelujah. I declare this word. Romans 15, 13. If we can pull it out uh, with the open, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the software that we have, open song. Uh, Romans 15, 13, New King James Version. We are reading it out now, now. May the God of hope. Hallelujah. May the God of hope. Hallelujah. May the God of hope that brings biblical hope hallelujah hope that resurrects hope that brings life hope that heals hope that releases the kingdom of god hallelujah into our bedrooms hallelujah into our homes hallelujah into our communities hallelujah into our family members hallelujah into our loved ones hallelujah into our workplaces hallelujah into our clinics hallelujah into our our factories hallelujah now may the god of hope hallelujah god God of hope, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that you're the God of hope, hallelujah. Fill you, fill you, fill you, fill you this morning. Fill us, hallelujah, this morning, Lord, 3rd of January, as we begin the year. Fill us, Lord, with all joy and peace, Lord. With all joy and peace in believing, Lord. Romans 15, 13 to the media team. Hallelujah. All joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope. Come on. You may abound in hope. Abound. You will be jumping around like a deer. Hallelujah. In your high places. Abounding in hope in every circumstances. Over the darkness. Hallelujah. Over the gloom and the doom. We will be the ones abounding in hope. Hallelujah. Coming from the God of hope, hallelujah. Abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Spirit of God, come and fill us afresh. Come and fill us afresh, hallelujah, this morning, Father God, with your hope, Father, that we will be proclaimers of your hope, proclaimers of your hope, proclaimers of biblical hope, Lord, proclaimers of biblical hope, Lord, everywhere we go, proclaim first of all to ourselves, Lord, in the mirror every day, Lord God, proclaim to ourselves through the mirror of the word of God, Father, and Lord, proclaiming that hope everywhere we go, Lord, may we be like the moon, Father, reflecting the hope that comes from the sun, Lord, the Son of God, hallelujah, receiving that hope, Father, and reflecting that hope everywhere we go. Church, get that picture in the name of Jesus. You become a reflector of hope in the name of Jesus. The hope that is found in Christ, the hope that is found in Christ that will come through your business, that will come through your studies, that will come through your friendships, that will come through your relationships, that will come through even your struggles, hallelujah. The hope that will shine forth, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come rain down. Rain down and fill us afresh this morning. Fill us afresh this morning with your hope, Lord. That we don't want to just be, just have enough of hope, Father God, or struggle with hope, but we want to abound and overflow with hope, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. Lord, in Jesus' name, Father, we begin to call out, Father, every sickness and every disease, Father God. Lord, the miracle is in our mouth, Father God. Lord, Father, we thank you that walls come crashing down, Father God, and miracles break out, Father God, when we, Lord, speak your word, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Let's ask the worship team to come. Let's just sing that, just a quick one, just a, the chorus and the bridge. Hallelujah. And let's make that a proclamation. If we can come very quickly and just and sing that song. I'm not very familiar, but we can sing it together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Just, just a very quick, Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's make the declaration, the chorus and the bridge. Amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. 
Let's take a few moments as the beginning of the year, the very first service. Let's set the pace in our hearts towards God. Hallelujah. Towards God. And let's just begin to proclaim that hope as we sing this song. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. When we open. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. You are my champion. Amen. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you won. Amen. I am who you say I am. You crown. You crown me with confidence. I am seated. In the heavenly place undefeated, amen, with the one who has conquered it all. Hallelujah. You are. You are my champion. Giants for when you stand undefeated. Every battle you walk, amen. Yes. I am who you say I am. You crown, Lord. Amen. You crown me with confidence. I am seated in the heavenly place undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord.
you, Lord. Father, we just want to thank you even as we depart from this place this morning, Lord. We leave with this mindset, Lord, with this mindset of hope, Father. A mindset of hope that never fades, that never fails, and continues to increase, Lord, in each and every one of our hearts and our lives. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of the Father and the fellowship and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Be blessed. And we will see you next week. Amen.